I am unashamed. What about you? I, I was actually <laughs> listening to the radio on the way down here, and they said this is the greatest flight out of urban cities since 1950. People, mm, they're leaving. leaving. So, and it's all thanks to you. I figured you'd want to take credit for that because <laughs> you said I've been to a town. <laughs> <laughs> He's a prophet. I didn't know that they would all start leaving, but good for them. <laughs> I didn't want them coming down in here. Put your, put your ears on because we can't hear well, what, what was the town? No, all it towns. Any, any urban. Any, any, uh, the bit, they said they're all moving to the suburbs. Well, oh, yeah. you've got, you've got yeah. a, I saw like over 500% increase in violent crimes in Seattle in the autonomous zone. It's yeah. over 300% in New York City. I mean, oh, yeah. you, it's pretty well, scary. Well, when, when, you, when you're saying <laughs> we want to give – less money to the police force and then at the same time yeah. we're we're going to you know have stuff going on it may be time to go i, I would be going i mean if, well, if i was in the middle of and trip. the coronavirus because right. if you just by sheer logic if you're in town with a lot of people you have a greater chance to get it so right. they're like i'm out of here well there was a there's a young guy that reached out that watches our or listens to our podcast and he's in manhattan and I was like, dude, man, just be safe, you know, because he, yeah. he was like, but he's he's seeking, you know, I can't, I, I should have wrote it. But how do you out. do that? I, I, people now in stores are telling me, be safe. I'm like, as opposed to what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What does that mean? Be safe. Well, that, what yeah. they're saying is good luck. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, there's so that, much well, going let's, on. Let's change that. <laughs> See, you you were saying it, didn't even realize because well, everybody's what saying that now. Be what safe. they're saying is, boy, I hope I hope Be you safe. make it. I hope yeah. it works out for you. Be safe. It's very ambiguous. <laughs> I'm like, I got in a dilemma Sunday morning. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm you. I'm saying that in jest. <clears throat> but you don't get somewhat, in dilemmas. No, no, somewhat of a dilemma because. They said, feel like this guy wants to say something to you. And back there, so I walked back and he and his son were. No, where, where were you? We was in the, in the uh, structure on the side of the road. Oh, y'all met Sunday? <laughs> we met Sunday. <laughs> you gone to town. This first. Well, I, I went, well, that's twice. <laughs> One of them was the structure, the the structure on the side, on the side of the road. Um, and anyway, the church I said, building. <laughs> it's not a church. So I walked over to him. I said, <laughs> what brings you to these parts? Where are you from? He said, northern uh, Tennessee. And he said, I've been watching y'all's podcast and the, and uh, Blaze TV. And he said, I've come all the way down there, Mr. Alton, I want you to baptize me. So I'm standing there and I'm thinking, the government says we've got to have social distancing. I mean, I, I, I'm supposed to have a mask on. Six uh, feet. Six, you got to baptize him six, from six foot away. Well, you got to have some long I gotta arms. I got to baptize him, and this guy was a bull, <laughs> about about 275, I thought 300 maybe. And you don't even have a bicep. You got a unicep. No, I got a half <laughs> arm over here. You know, well, no, I don't want to show it, Jason. Like, look at it. But anyway, so I preach the gospel, make sure you understood. I stress love a lot. So after it's over, somebody said they drained while the pandemic was going on. Somebody, uh, somebody drained the baptistry. Oh no! Well, I'm sitting. That's a about, bad sign. Never man. do that. I'm sitting. To run out of water. No water. <laughs> uh -uh. So I'm I'm three and four miles, three miles from the river, or whatever. I said, well, I said, what we'll do is I we either after this is over here, I said, my man, get behind my truck, <laughs> and we're going to get you to some water. So I took off. Well, I ended up, you know, you have to grab somebody to baptize them. So I'm thinking, it just crossed my mind. I was thinking, these government edicts, <laughs> and I quickly reverted to Psalm 91, 10,000 will fall at your right hand. And We're back thousand, on Psalm 91. 91. Thousands on your left, but it will not come near you. I said, I'm telling this guy, I've been telling him since he walked in, God is going to raise you from the dead. And for me to say, uh, he's going to raise you from the dead, but I got to go with the government officials who say, I'm not supposed to get around near you. He's going to raise you from the dead, but this pandemic may kill us both, this coronavirus. Yeah. I just said, 
what, what am I talking about? The one who raises dead men are going to punish us because the guy comes down there and put his faith in Jesus? I, I'm like, well, even if you died, it wouldn't be a yeah. punishment. You'd be in. Well, and it'd be the best thing you could ever do. It's what I was saying. I don't view death as a negative so thing. So here I am. Somebody said, well, he's an idiot. But when it comes to how I'm going to roll based on some edict, I'm going to read the Bible and see if it stacks up with it. Yeah. And if it doesn't stack up with it, I'm not going to mess with it. I don't care what they're saying. The what government official? Well, they put you in jail. All right, they, they put up the Apostle Paul in jail repeatedly, and mm-hmm. and I may end up there, but that's fine. There'll be some there you can talk to. So that's just my take on it. So how did how did it work? Did you, did you have a little trouble getting him up, or did, how did that? Uh, Kellett was there on the scene. He can tell you about it. The 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 immersing. I already heard about it. The immersing the went smooth. <laughs> But 275, 300, you know, yeah. I decided after we wrestle a little bit. You oh, met, I've done the little guy, Did you let him go? Met, uh, Did you just I let him go? I finally got him up out of there. Sometimes oh, no. you just got to let him go. And I said, that's what I, look, I they'll bab- bob up on their own. I baptized the guy. He's about 500. But I was thrilled to baptize the dude. And, and I was by the way, we had baptized two more after – we met oh, before really? you got there. So right. the, the, the burial part was extended, is what you're telling me. There was a lengthy. No, that's burial. what I was gonna say. I baptized a guy that was about twice that, and I because he was like, "Well, now how's this gonna work?" And I was like, "No problem. Just trust me. I'm gonna get you under." And I was thinking, and then you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at a few of them, and when I see the great big ones. I, I'll Remember? say I get I say need another man on this one because sometimes you two. can tandem. Yeah. So what about the guy? Remember the little preaching student at that time, and he had that big old hoss Ooh. of a man. And but he his problem he didn't let go. So now you're drowning him. I mean we're, right. we're, we're beyond that. Once they went down, there was a lot of racket, <laughs> and then but, they both. But no one was coming up. <laughs> right. yeah. One of them, one time, Tommy M was baptizing a guy at the WFR, and he took him down, and then the guy just took off like a fish. Tommy said, "I just lost him. He took off. So <laughs> he lost him. He was like a torpedo. He went over. He went like this. Well, he went you know far to the back of that thing. And he went boom. He just forehead to the back of the baptism. I mean, it was, oh, a, I was there. I saw. Remember that? that? It was it, a reverberation. Like he was and like when he came up, look, you could see <laughs> it was a goose the head. noggin." <laughs> Getting bigger as he talked. Literally, when he was walking yeah. up the steps, like the knot what, is growing. What, what was the story? Was it you that was telling me about baptizing the guy that you he had a uh, with Sampanero, Doctor Sampanero, and he had a trait? Uh, tra- uh, no, he that had was a, on the cruise thing. Right? I have baptized them. They couldn't get out of the wheelchair. Some guy pulled up me, and they said, "There's a guy in the parking lot at my house right here," and and I said, "I said, what's he want?" He said, "Well." He wanted to talk to you. He said he can't get out of the car right now, but he but he's in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And he they got him inside a, a van. And I, I walked out there. I said, Yes, sir, what can I do for you? And he said, He said, Mr. Robson, he said, I've been trying to get somebody to baptize me for the last six months, but nobody'll do it. I'm like, Oh, well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I said, Y'all help him out of this thing. I said, Listen, here's what we're gonna do. I said, You're too big for us to carry you. I said, so we fixed to baptize you, the wheelchair, and everything you got with you. <laughs> I said, so, but I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get several men on you both sides. Of you. So we go to the boat dock and we just roll the the. He, he's sitting in the wheelchair. I said, we're gonna, we're gonna. I would, everybody's going under uh, and I everything. Would, I would think the hardest part of that was getting a wheelchair down that rickety thing that you where well, you baptized. Why would just get a track? We, we pull up pretty in close the, in, in the bucket. Uh, well, just, I'm just saying we got about three men on each side. I said, because guys, remember. <laughs> If this wheelchair gets away from us on this boat dock, this pretty steep boat dock, <laughs> wow! I said we're not I mean, going to feel good about it. Has anybody this. ever told you guys that you need your own reality TV show? Uh, hey, you it know, was a should, very serious a month. You but that guy, see. he thanked me. He was an older man, and he said, he said after it's all over, he, he started calling me Phil. He said, Phil, I'm sure glad you did that. It's really a big relief off of me. He said, oh, I read what Jesus said: go make disciples and baptize them. He said, and I thought, well, I've never been baptized. He said, and he said, I was finding it hard to believe somebody wouldn't wouldn't do it. And I said, well, you come to the right place. We had dude. a guy. Remember that guy? His name. One was, woman was wrapped in saran. Oh yeah, wrap. that's the ones that was talking about. Uh, she dog, had a wood. Like I had a, a I called the uh, uh, Sampanero uh, MD in because I said, you know what do you do? The woman's got like a hole in her throat, and she no longer could speak, and uh, her voice was gone. Because that operator bad cancer, you know, and 
but she could, so I wrote her notes as I was studying with her. I was talking to her and she's understanding. And I, I told, I wrote one little note down. I said, I said, you're the easiest person I've ever talked to because you don't argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she grinned, she grinned at me, you know, but we wrapped her in saran wrap, even the, yeah, the tray coal. We couldn't stop the tray coal because that's the only way she could breathe. So Sampanero, the doctor, we, we she had like uh what do you call them you know little bags a colostomy bag whatever yeah had all that so she, he wrapped all that in saran wrap and then he he said I'm gonna hold my hand right on that right on oh, the so old, he baptized her with you w- he was with me right. and and he just went down with her just with his hand to wow. keep the water out of the hole in her throat you know but it was a beautiful baptism. That's something. You know, that's the, I told her, I said, you're going to be, when you get your glorified body, you're going to be really thankful that you did this. Mm-hmm. I said, because there'll come a day. You know I what said, that was? I, I said, there won't be any of these bags hanging on you. All yeah. that will be over. Yeah, it's a beautiful of picture. She, she cried. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. That so that's uh, you and Sam were like Paul and Luke. Yep. You know, Luke was the physician. Yep. You know, he, I'm sure he had some things in there during sure. this period of time that was doing that. He's helped me from time to time on people with particular ailments, <laughs> and they're, I, they're scared about being baptized yeah, yeah, because, yeah. you know, it's, it's a— well, yeah, The, the most interesting one I ever had, I had a woman come and say that she wanted to be baptized. She said, I love Jesus, but I feel like I need to be baptized. I was like, great. It's like, you know, let's go. She said, the problem is I have a fear of water. Uh-oh. Being underwater, I was I like, a lot, a lot "Do you of take a bath?" She's like, "No." I, she basically just spit bath. Well, yeah. yeah, she's not going underwater. She's never been. She said, "But I think that I may scream, I may holler, but I just want you to do it." <laughs> and so I said, "We're going to need some more men for that." I mean, and she literally, I felt like she had because she was fighting me the whole time, and I was like. Are you sure? Because we had a pool that was only like three foot deep, like one of these little round redneck pools, you know? Oh, yeah. So I'm like, you can stand up in the water, but she wouldn't get in it. Mm-hmm. And then, but she'd scream and holler, and I'd say, you know, abort the mission. She was like, no. So then I thought, <laughs> she wants me to do this. She just, she just has a phobia. So it's about four of that's, us. By the way, Joe, that's aquaphobia. 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 I didn't know. I knew there had to be. I've had a few. An irrational fear. Well, this was a, it was like she had a demon until she came out of the water, which was, you, when you said it was a beautiful baptism, which made me think of it. And then there was just like a peace come over. Mm. And mm-hmm. I thought, well, you might have got rid of your fear of water. And she said, I might have. I tell One of the most you, unusual ones I've seen, <clears throat> I took a little girl down there and it's about, 15, 20 people standing on the bank. So she had heard the gospel. She said, I, I believe Jesus died for our movie was resurrected. I said, well, come on, we're going to reenact your death to sin and your burial and your resurrection. So I baptized her, and it was it was as quiet. No one was saying anything. It was quiet, and there had been about seven or eight dogs follow us down there. <laughs> So the crowd's quiet. I'm telling her, I'm now baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, you know. And I said, God's going to give you a spirit. I said, Joe, you ready? She said, yeah. So as soon as she went down in the water, the dogs went into a fight. You know they were, you know how dogs are smacking around on each yeah. other? Well, those <laughs> dogs got into about eight dogs fighting at once. They all were just like, all them dogs. There's a, there's a parable. Well, when she went like down, that. it was quiet. When she yeah. came up, <laughs> what she heard was dogs going. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> well, it scared the daylights out of her. I mean, she, she thought, she, like she thought the demons had right. gone into so the dogs. So I was dog. th- trying to think of something because yeah, all yeah. the people were watching, and I and and everybody said, well, and I said. I said, the Almighty has thrown her evil spirit, thrown them into them dogs, and that's why they're acting like that. Everybody said, really? I said, I'm just, I don't think so, but I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I think you mentioned. But they all laugh. Hang, you on that, hang on a Let's take a break. So our friends at uh, Patriot Mobile, uh, they have an interesting idea, Dad. They said since the left has had the cancel culture, you know, that's the new thing now. Oh, yeah. You get canceled. So they say, let's get in on the action. Cancel your leftist-supporting cell phone provider. 
<laughs> which is pretty. That's pretty. Oh, cool. I already have. <laughs> and you never had them. You, you just don't have one. You, you canceled oh. before they were canceling. It was cool. I canceled the device itself. <laughs> Can that you way. cancel if you've never signed up? No. You well, just, I'm not sure what you do. I don't know how you do that. I am oblivious. This to won't apply that to that particular device. I like that. So right now, if you join and switch to Patriot Mobile, uh, you have a free activation if you use the code Phil. So here's what you want to do. You want to go to patriotmobile.com slash Phil. Uh, they'll get you started. Customized plan, 25 bucks, Or you can call 972-PATRIOT. 972-PATRIOT. PatriotMobile.com slash Phil to make the switch. You know, it reminded me of the pigs, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what he You was mentioned saying. the uh, Great Commission earlier. Uh, the, the baptism to me is the, the, is the easier part. I think the hard part is the one that comes before it. Yeah. Make disciples. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about yeah. John 8 We were before the, you know we started when you were talking about they were all good with, hey, we believe in you until, until Jesus told them who they were. You know, then, then then they didn't want to follow. Plus that confession, Jesus is Lord, at Romans 10, you know, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. So we usually, well, we do. Every time we talk to them, I say, you're making a big decision here. Uh, the confession of Jesus is Lord, but I want you to say it. And we have people who are listening here. So when they make that confession, but you think about it, Jesus is Lord. That's a mouthful. Well, think about most of this crowd that we've been talking about all the way back when they first started gathering here the last two or three chapters in John. We're, I assume most of this group had probably been baptized by John's John and his disciples or by Jesus' disciples. Remember, over and over, we kept saying they were baptizing people for the baptism repentance. Yeah, it doesn't say in this. It doesn't say, but I'm assuming it's probably part of that same crowd. You know, so they basically have said, we think this is something. You know, we, we think you're something, mm-hmm. but then as we see, they just, they're just Jekyll and Hyde, like literally in one conversation, they go from being, oh, he's got to be the guy. Yeah. You know, we got to make him the king to, well, we, well that's, well, that's no, uh, we, this guy's crazy. Eat his flesh. You know, all the stuff yeah. we've been talking about. It's like a roller coaster. But you wouldn't believe it either. No. Well, I mean, if, if you didn't, if you didn't see it for what it, but that's the thing about faith though, Jay. I mean, people now have to believe we're, you're looking backwards mm-hmm. but you still got to believe it. it's true you know because I, I get there's a lot of podcast listeners that are going through different faith crises and they're just I mean, like think how about, do you believe i mean I, i'm having a hard yeah. time believing you know think about uh uh verse 21 8 21 i'm going jesus talking i'm going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin where I go, you cannot come. Just think about this kind of logic. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? <laughs> he, he, They flipped it around on him. Yeah. I mean, what an answer when he says, you know, uh, look, uh, I'm going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin where I go you cannot come and the death part is probably what got him thinking suicide because they're yeah. like what what is he you know what is he talking about I, is he gonna kill himself <laughs> I think I think the place they couldn't go was uh, in the kind of the crux of it is in verse 33 um, when he basically tells them you know you're, you're you're a slave and they're like whoa, whoa, whoa wait we're Abraham's descendants and had never been enslaved to anyone which is interesting because they had been yeah they they had they had certainly been enslaved. I mean, the yep. the history of Israel is a history of yep. oppression and slavery. Uh, but I think that it was what he was talking about was your slave to sin. And I think they and I think they were probably hearing that because I don't think they're talking about uh, physical slavery because they had had this long history. Right. I think what they couldn't <clears throat> get on board with and where their belief ended is is whenever Jesus told them about who they were in 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 the context of. You're sinners, and not only are you sinners, you're enslaved to it. They weren't thinking high high enough up, but by saying what he's saying is, he can forgive us. He can forgive sin. They said, Whoa. but they have to admit guilt first, and so that's the. I think that's the deal. It's the pride deal. It's the same thing today. You know, it's it's easy to come to Jesus if we're talking about me getting healed of some physical ailment or whatever. But you start talking about me being a rebellious creature. That's a little bit more. 
um, offensive for me to hear that if somebody tells me that. But well, he, I mean, he actually said the po- he said you will know the truth, which is a famous verse. Yeah. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. In thirty one, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now that was a beautiful statement, mm-hmm. whatever it means. And then they said, "What are you trying to say? We've never been slaves of anyone." <laughs> He didn't say he didn't say that. He just said That's true. That's you want to be true? I mean, you want to be free? The truth, which I think he meant himself, you know, because here you have really the difference in is it his teaching or is it him? Because he said, Hold to my teaching, but it my is the key word. Because he's proven that he's God in the flesh. Right. And then that they're the ones that went into the what are you talking about? Free. We're not slaves of anyone, which makes me think when people who are locked up in sin, because then he explained himself and said, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. But but they're the ones that brought up the negative yeah, that's view, true. view of that. But he was speaking to the truth because the word of truth throughout the Bible, the word of truth, the word of truth is, in fact, Jesus dying. He said it. He said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know who I am, that I do nothing on my own but speak, uh, but just what the Father has taught me. He said, it's coming. They were like lifted up. They, they weren't quite quite putting it together right there at that point, were they, Al? No, they weren't. And and part of the problem was, I mean, you remember back in John 7, Jesus kept using Moses as an illustration to them. Yeah. You know, that comparison of the idea of being led out. And he kept – showing them like you, you know you, you claim that Moses did this but you know you do this so he kept using that illustration so I think in their minds they're listening and that they could relate to I mean they knew their history they knew Moses had led them out of slavery from Egypt yeah and so they saw Moses as this figure and so they're trying to relay Jesus into are you the new what are you I mean because they would say is, but the, is the problem the is how he was saying is they didn't know they were locked up that's right. But which is like anybody. He was trying to tell them, the, I'm God, I'm Yahweh, but that's what they couldn't wrap their brain around. Well, I think this is so relevant for, for where we're at today because so much of the church has been infiltrated with um, liberation theology, which essentially teaches that we are to interpret the scripture through the lens of an oppressed people group. So they, uh, they're they looking at it like that the, the, the Jesus and the gospel is about being liberated from oppression here on planet Earth, right. like like literal slavery. Right, that's and, what they kept saying. Yeah, right. or like like the the Egyptians uh, mm-hmm. enslaved the, the the Hebrews, and so that, and that's kind of the story, right? Um, you read Hebrews eleven, you're kind of like, well, we're not really promised a whole lot of you know, benefit here. Sometimes some some people you die. That's you know, right. you not get, at all. We're, yeah. we're it's, citizens it's, of heaven. This yeah. is just what he said. But it's the the the, the, the liberation, the freedom. Is the is the is it's freedom from your own sin, your own depravity, yeah. and and your own hopelessness. In that, if I got to bootstrap myself up, and I've read quite a bit of self help books, even from people that are in the church, and and anytime I read something that's like you know you do you be your best self, you know bootstrap yourself, I'm like man, at the end of the day, I know that I can't do that. And Ten steps to a successful life. It's Five like, keys to <laughs> overcoming. And you read them, and you seven, get fired up, and then yeah. you're like, "I'm going to do it." And then, like two weeks later, you're like, "Oh, back, oh, I'm man. back to the same place." And it's only in Jesus, because right. Jesus says, "You're not doing it. The work is finished. Right. I, I, I've already done it. I've finished it. That's why it's called the finished work on the cross. Jesus accomplished it. He finished it, and we're living in that grace. Oh, By yeah. the way, Jesus' statement here, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. I mean, if you just want to hear uh, uh, in-depth uh, uh, reading on that, speaking of baptism, uh, you died to sin. You'll see, we were baptized into Jesus' death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we've been united with him in his death, we'll certainly also be united with him in his resurrection, for we know that our old self, now, now Jesus was telling those people, uh, you're slave to sin. Our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Well, that's what he told them that they were. 
because anyone who has died, and in this case, is you're looking at your spiritual death to sin, anyone who's died has been freed from sin. What he's given you the point in time. Now, as you go down that rest of Romans 6, uh, you get down to verse 16. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey? In all humans' cases, they're slaves to the evil one. He brings that up a little further on in John 8. Whether you're slave to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness, thanks be to God, though you used to be slaves to sin, there it is again, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. If you remember, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That means you're really my disciples. Well, the Apostle Paul is just elaborating on that. I put this in human terms because you're weak in your natural self, just as you used to offer the parts of your body to in slavery, to impurity, and to ever-increasing wickedness. So now, since you've been born again, offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. The evil one had you. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you're now ashamed of? The answer is no benefit. These things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin, remember Jesus said, hold on my teaching, then you're really my disciples, then you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, the Apostle Paul is still advancing that. And you've become slaves to God. The benefit you now reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. And he was telling the people back there in John 8, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that's a pretty long discussion on, on slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. Exactly. <clears throat> Let's take a break. All right, you know, Keeps, have, they've been one of our sponsors for a while, and I didn't really, you know, because I have a lot of hair, so it doesn't really <laughs> appeal to me. I get it. People are losing hair, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I had drainage issues at my house, and I thought, I'll fix it. I unscrewed the drain in my shower because it's backing up. And I basically pulled out <laughs> a hairball the size of a football. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you know what the first thing I thought? Well, I might ought to keep some of this on the head. <laughs> so, so it's coming out of your hair and Missy's, I guess. I guess. Of yeah, I mean, it just seemed, you well, I know it's kind of gross, but you know what? It's part of life. There your you hair go. falls out, it goes down the drain. Guess what? <laughs> Stops up your drain. Well, I hadn't thought about that. It's another reason to want to keep your hair is to keep a football-sized hairball coming out of your drain. Plumbing bills. Plumbing bills. <laughs> So anyway, we want you to keep your hair. Jace just gave you another reason to do it. And the folks at Keeps, that's what they're all about. Basically, you go to Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. Uh, you're going to get 50% off your first order. You go online. Uh, you know, they've got some questions for you to answer there. And you can uh, figure out if this product can help you. So it's Keeps dot com slash door and keep your hair out of your drain. Yeah, and, and but it's there. In fact, he goes on to say that in John eight. I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So Jesus said that, and then Paul elaborated on it later. Yep. I did find it interesting that he's trying to explain to him about who he is because he says, "If the Son sets you free," in verse thirty six, John eight, you will be free indeed. Mm -hmm. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I've seen the Father's presence and that you haven't heard from your father. It's the just, only way I think I could understand this is that you would have had to be, and he was. I mean, because up until now you say, he just said, you're trying to kill me. Well, they had never actually said that. Right. But Jesus, being a mind reader, <laughs> knew what was in their hearts. For the ones who had believed in him, he said, if you hold him a teaching, 
Then you really my disciples. That's then right. you know the truth. The truth will set you free. And, and then the static starts. And he said, oh, no, what y'all are trying to do, you're trying to kill me. We, we, you know what the amazing thing is? They did. <laughs> That's right. Well, and he even alluded to it back they in, did when, kill him. Back yeah, in 28 because he said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, well, he was talking about he yeah. was going to be lifted exactly. up. Exactly. I mean, so. he knew they were going to were gonna kill him anyway. Right. But yeah, I think what stands out to me is the two things really so far – their problems was one, they didn't realize they were in sin. I mean, that's if you don't right. realize your condition, that's why you don't get help, <laughs> which is universal and modern today. That's, that, that, to that's say, why the first step in the recovery programs at church at CR, what's the first admit step? There's a problem. I used to say <laughs> hey, I used to say to your mother back when I was a heathen. Be careful. I used to say <laughs> I, I, I've got to, she would say, what, what, why are you doing? What are you doing? I said, I've got to have, this is what I said. I have to have my freedom. Yeah. Yeah. You that you were about, locked up. You talk about, oh, was I locked up? A complete idiot. But you were doing it in the name of freedom, I which was is doing kind it, of what was happening Not here. knowing yeah. I was a slave to sin right. and Jesus could set me free. I was telling her, I have to do this for my freedom. Right. I have to be free to do anything I want to at any time I want so, to. Any so, time. And so th- then he becomes a Christian. That's the way so, I so justify so my mind, right. getting right. drunk, whoring around. Because you know, your so, flesh, your sinful part of who you are was driving your narrative. But, but it, the it, Apostle it, Paul said it. What benefit did you reap right. from the things you're now ashamed of? Right, right, well, so. that's me right there. Right. Well, that's that was it. the first one, and we all acknowledge it. The second one's a little more tricky. Because he says, you have no room for my word in your life. So what do you think that means? I mean, that was their problem. One, they didn't acknowledge. All right. mm-hmm. Then two, he said, you ha- that's what he when said. When I was a heathen controlled by Satan and a no slave to sin, word. I had no room for any Jesus talk. Yeah. If Could- I saw a preacher coming, I headed the other direction. That meant your heart was full of evil. It's an full interesting way to say it. Well, right. there's another thread coming through here about the, he, the, he says the people that are of God hear him and the people that aren't don't. That's right. Which, I mean, that, that leads to an interesting discussion. I want to say one thing real quick, though, about what you said because it's, it's it's a great like juxtaposed position of what's going on here. That was a big word, Jeff. Just, just juxtaposed position. That's a, that's a you're, Zach word. You're, you're I have no idea you're what climb, that means. You're climbing the ladder. The subdivision has has been has Why opened your eyes. Why does go to dude. a subdivision? We're so down in here juxtaposed. We don't use that. I thought he meant. I, I got it, Zach. I thought he said I just suppose. <laughs> So like go on with your point. Okay, like here's, that, here's, here's, you, here's my you know? point. There's a there's a, a yin and a yang here that I think is interesting of another story. I remember when you spoke, because you were talking about you thought you were free when yeah. you were in slavery. That's right. And then when you spoke at Angola, I loved your opening line that you said, you because everyone in that prison, was a, you said, you can be under lock and key and still be free. Which is that, what did they do when he said that? Oh, that, it was like Johnny Cash at you know yeah. Folsom Prison yeah. Blues. I mean, it come was, to Folsom <laughs> Prison. Well, when I my well, you prison. think about it, if you're in for life, and and ninety percent of those guys, oh, yeah. what I told them was, I said, you're never going back down that road. They Plus, they were piping, you know, they were piping you into death row, and some of those guys on death row obeyed the gospel. That's exactly over right. Because the warden told out. me yeah. later, he said, you know, we went over and they wanted us to baptize you, Maybe baptize I them, to change but, but we never had done that we never let it well, I, when uh, i went to the but prison did, but they did what stood out in those two years that i went voluntarily was that <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering if you were uh, to give us a testimony i, I tell that story all the time. <laughs> i spent two years in prison people they're they're so judgmental <laughs> when you said it and uh, i was like voluntarily <laughs> sharing jesus with them but what i found to be the m- number one most common problem is that they would not acknowledge their sin. They just wouldn't do it. They were acting like they weren't locked up Yeah. in a negative way, not in a Jesus way. They're like, oh, it's everybody's out to get me. I didn't do it. What's the old they saying? Lie. Prisons are full of innocent people, you know? Yeah. And you I mean, know, there's. True. Yeah. And I was like, you're locked up. And then they would want to argue about religious things, you know? And I'm like, you're in prison <laughs> for breaking the law, you know? And most of them have a and, long list. Let's, yeah, let's, take right. it, let's take another break. 
So, Dad, one of the um, Tex Cyrus uh, wrote a book uh, that you read. Yep. And uh, and recommend, and I love the name of it. Your mama wasn't a monkey. Good which, book. Which it sounds like something you would say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like you know, and so basically. They send me a lot of books, but I don't read many of them. But I read that one. Yeah, is it the title that caught you? Is that was that what caught you, or you just were curious? I, I knew it had something to do with uh, the evolutionary theory, right? The evolutionists. So I thought usually I'll read those just to see what angle they're coming from, right? But uh, and he was a MD, and right, you know, the guy was sharp as he can be, right? And I think that's what's so good about his book. It's uh, it's his memoir, so it yep. tells a lot about his life tragedies, things he's learned yep. about. But then at the same time, it kind of led him to this idea uh, about us not descending from monkeys and that there really is a God. So uh, we recommend it. Uh, you can purchase the book, Your Mama Wasn't a Monkey by Tech Cyrus on Amazon.com and uh, check it out. But I see what what he was saying in that setting. I, it's weird how we both went to that situation. Because to them, there were some who who were honest, some were honest, and, and were open to Jesus. But then there was another. There were a whole other group that were like, "No." Well, and in the you discussion, <clears throat> remember, we're kind of going back and forth. But when you get to verse forty-two, and Dad, you've read this many times on the podcast. I mean, Jesus takes it to another level when he basically said, first they're arguing about who their father is, and then all of a sudden he just blitzes them. With oh, you know who your father is? Hmm. The devil. And and yeah. look, what is ironic, these are two thousand year old, give or take a few, two thousand year old writings. You fast forward to modern day America or anywhere else you want to go. But when he designated you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire, he was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He is a liar and the father of lies. But if you just look at what ails every nation, murder and lies, Mm -hmm. those are the top two. Well, when you're looking at America, Zach, do you see any murder? A lot of murder and a lot of lies. You should write a book on that. You should. Oh, huh? wait, you did. The Theft of America So. That's theft what it was about. Theft of America So. And, and Jesus Politics. And Jesus, Jesus politics, politics is the new one, which is the kingdom living. I wrote about Jesus Politics because this is one of the good places to go. Yeah. And you say, so what's it? But, but we have a culture that says there is no God. There's no devil either. You're like, boy, you could have fooled me just from watching y'all. But you got to <clears> remember, <throat> look, you got to remember something I think we're missing in this the story the first verse of 31 this was to the ones that believed him yeah mm-hmm. there's no telling what the ones that said that dude's a fool because you're oh, right verse I mean, 30 he, said many had put their faith in him so you're right i mean these are the it, ones that says this, we, we think you're yeah and i the think guy. i equate that to what's going on now to what we would call cultural christianity yeah you know it's people that believe and i think corona's shaking that up you know yeah. i mean we're in and all this uh you know, civil unrest. I mean, I think it's shaken up. I think that in this, Jace, you mentioned something earlier that spurred my thought. What what Jesus said that got them so angry? It really was two things. It was one what you said that that, that you're a sinner essentially, and he did, he didn't have to say that. He just said that you can be free, and then they implied from that. What, what yeah, do you they mean? got yeah, offended. Yeah, yeah they were offended. Saying, it, it, it was. I'll a, set you free. It was we're, offensive. We're but, free. Yeah. yeah. And the second thing I think is is that he's, and this is probably even more important, that he's claiming what he he's claiming to be God. That's it. Well, right. So I think that that's highly offensive too, because we want you look at the whole history of, of kind of humanity as humanity trying to attain salvation, whether it's that we're going to build a tower and we're going to climb it and reach God, or you know we're going to climb this mountain and we're going to do it by our good works. And just the very incarnation of God in flesh is just a slap in the face to humanity in one sense that you will never reach me. That's right. You know, I had to come to you. Um, so I think there's in this in this passage, you're just seeing the whole gospel oh. played out. I think they were also insulted. The one that I was kind of looking at three things, you know, that they didn't that they weren't getting that he was bringing out with the they didn't realize slave to sin. They didn't have any room, but then they got offended. 
when they because they took Abraham, they're like, well, you know, Abraham is our father. But Jesus is like, well, you're not acting like Abraham. <laughs> That's right. So basically, if you go to Hebrews 11, and no, I started off this conversation today talking about people moving out of the city. Yeah. But you know, when you think about what Abraham did, obviously, what gets all the uh, the press, I guess, is he was willing to to sacrifice his son because God told him to, because he reasoned that God could raise the dead. Now, that's a man of faith there. This is before the resurrection to reason that. But he also did something that I think for us practically would be way more difficult in our, you know, in our, in our weak ways is pick up and move. I mean, it's like if I try to tell Phil, hey, you need to move from yeah. your house. I've got a I've got a no. place I'm going to send you in New York City I to, feel do my, like if to do my work. Phil given the option <laughs> yeah. of sacrificing one of his go. kids or moving, <laughs> it would be a close call. <laughs> but what would you choose, Phil? So, so look, no, don't answer that. Don't Phil. answer that. So in eleven eight, when you read in Hebrews, it says by by faith, just think about what Abraham did in contrast to what they're 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 sitting there having a conversation with Jesus. And are denying him as the Son of God. That's what you pointed out. But by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger Mm. in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God." But I've just always looked at that as something we don't really discuss. But to me, that that's would key. be that, that's key. So difficult for and you. Look, you know when to he received. You know when he received the inheritance of the land. You know how long? Four hundred and thirty years later is when it happened. But you, if you read the rest I of mean, Hebrews, which is amazing. You read the rest. So we talk about one life like it's all about this long, one life. You know, you know, that was long 400, haul. 430 well, years. Well, he was one of several heroes of the faith in Hebrews 11. It gets to the end, and there's that kind of the uh, death knell to the prosperity gospel, and it says yeah. none of them received the promise while they were alive. Exactly. And they're it's going to they're receive the ultimate promise with us. and. So we're not promised that. You know? And Jason's right. They were the examples of that sort of patience. I mean, yeah. we let God drive that show, not us. Well, they yeah. said Abraham is our father. And he he's like, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things Abraham did, like these. Well, <laughs> they're so far away from that. Yeah. I mean, they're offended at well, him it, saying that. Well, I think I got another one of these just opposed. Hang, hang on, hang on. Let's take a break. And now juxtapose us, Dad. Well, what was that's that a, word that's one again? Of our new ju- juxtapose. If it's they what, had known, I, your dad's an English has a master's in English. Oh, Dad knows. That. He had heard it, but I had never heard of yeah, juxtapose. I'm just, I'm just messing with y'all. How would, you, how would you define it, Phil? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> it's like well, contrasting one. It contrasts. Here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> when the Apostle Paul wrote Colossians, but you have to remember, this is pre that. This is 40 years, 30, 40 years earlier. Mm-hmm. If they had known. That Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. We're talking atoms, molecules, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. These people that he was talking to, they didn't realize that. They didn't get it. They, they didn't get it. He's before all things. In him all things hold together. He's the head of the body, the church. They'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. They just didn't realize who they were talking to. And watch. Here's the solution to their problems that they didn't know. God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him. They didn't know that. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. They didn't know that. Whether things on earth or things in heaven. They didn't know that. By making peace through his blood shed on the cross. They didn't know that. Once, and watch, here's, here they are. Once you were alienated from God. That's where they were. And enemies in your minds because of evil behavior. That's them. But now he's reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death. 
when me when I'm lifted up, Jesus told them, they're all our word, to present you holy in his sight, the blood had to be shed. Without blemish, the blood had to be shed. This is what they could have had. Free from accusation, if you continue in your faith, watch this, establish and firm, not move from the hope held out in the gospel. He said it all comes back to Jesus, who he is, his death, yeah. burial, and resurrection. So if they had known, had that information, but you just think about it, Zach. They, they may have rejected that too. I think they, they were saying, you got to remember, they were saying the right things. I mean, at the end of 41, they said the only father we have is God himself. Well, that's a fantastic <laughs> yeah. The problem is they were saying the right things to the wrong person because he was that guy. So can well, you imagine right. Jesus? He he know, He's God, so he knows everything. Yeah, I, I remember Abraham. I, I was there. And which is what he says later. Yeah, the, before he, yeah, Abraham, no, that was but that was a drop the mic. His drop the mic was. Says, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was born, I, I am. Yeah, he's speaking in past tense and refers to himself in, in present. Pre- like I think it's I him. <laughs> what, what I would say that was the. I've said this before, but yeah. that is the greatest line in the history of the world. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> well, only God could say it. Who, who, could, the who, who say it. could speak about themselves yeah. in a non-temporal like? <laughs> That's, I transcend time. That's right. Bring somebody I mean, up that was here, what, a couple thousand years ago, and then you say, hey, because you're having this huge argument about whether we're his children or not. Yeah. He's like, well, see, before the po- he was, I am. <laughs> not I was, I am. So you yeah. know what their response that's to that, power. Jace? You know what they, do you know how they reacted in verse 59? I don't read. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away. Another Which Jedi. to me is so hypocritical. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. I think the thing you is, can't about, about, here, so I, I, I would have ran. It's, I don't think it's just that they couldn't answer. I think there's a big difference here, and Abraham's the is the example. It's not enough to just believe. It's because the demons believe and it's shudder. Uh, it says in James, yeah. it's it's it, there's a difference between believing in God and then believing God, believing His revelation of Himself. That's right. And I think that's where they were like, "Well, we believe, but do you believe what He's telling you about Himself?" Which is what you just read in Colossians, which is yep. this supremacy message and the reason why we don't want to believe that is because we're like eh, i'm not going to bow the knee and so the Bible, that's what 90 percent right. of that's it. people in a poll say they believe in god right because he's revealed himself 90 percent 90 until you say bow the knee right somebody's lying <laughs> well <laughs> well no but look, here's father of lies it's, here's well, why well, that's well, because it's a different image that's right he it, revealed himself in two ways generally by the creation what Romans 1 tells us, right? Yep. So everybody looks at that and says, well, you know, I can't explain all this, so maybe I do believe in God. But then the second revelation, the exact, here's the story, here's why I can't, yeah. that's the one that's, that's where it's tricky. Find good, which is why I said always that 10% of the world, they're crazy, which that proves my point. Because 90% at least says, okay, there's something. Because <laughs> you just can't get around it. Well, there's 10, 10%, they're, they're nuts. Because if you say there's just nothing, we're just here floating on nothing, and I'm nothing. That was my approach to preaching, Jay. I always said every audience I speak to, 10% of them, especially our church, they love me. So no matter what I say, they're going to love me. 10% think I'm an idiot. It's the middle 80 I'm trying to convince that this is the truth <laughs> of the so. matter. Well, so. I think that's the way politics works. I, 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 I think, I think the, the, it applies today just like it did back then. If you preach that Christ is supreme and that we are not— you're going to get flack. Yep. Bottom line, you get people. Well, that's you. troubling because that's all I. That's all I do. Right. Well, I mean, it motivates every. It then it motivates everything you do. We talked about a lot last night. We did. We that. worship a God that we've never seen. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's why the number They're one saying, question. How, how I, could you do that? When I how, say when that's I stupid, I right. go to these young people and I say, close your eyes and picture God. You know what the number one answer is when I say, what'd you see? Oh man, nothing. Uh, wow. That's right. The number one answer. Nothing. Wow. Well, no wonder you're having such a hard time <laughs> following Jesus in school. <laughs> Man. <laughs> That's a good point. Because when I when I would do that, I would think of everything. Like I mean Well, you would think, but I mean they're young. They don't believe. Right. I think of somebody just, with the like they, white beard and, and that's the That's first what time. I was thinking. Yeah, like, that's kind of a Moses. I mean, I yeah. think the first time I did it. I guess that verse where it says he's in an unapproachable light, you know, I just see this big light. But 
kind of the I mean, ma- the transfiguration picture kind of is what you're imagining like that's the, what it was yeah. but now i'm like more because i realize now that i in my maturity in in the faith i realize that jesus is the image of god so i basically picture someone from that region right. who really didn't stand out not like the hollywood version where they're always good looking and flowing in wow. the weird act or even back further even it, that's the renaissance period it's like yeah. a, a western european look with the blue eyes and the yeah because i realized everything that jesus did it was nothing like you thought he would do and so even in, in his appearance isaiah says that there was nothing that mm-hmm. what we were that men would be drawn to he was just a normal looking fellow which mm-hmm. is what God would do. He would yep. camouflage it where whatever you think, as far as the high and mighty jars of clay. Yeah, think about it's it. Jars, you're you're jars gonna you're gonna enter point. the world for the first time ever in flesh, and the dude that's paving the way for you. You know he's got camel's hair, Robin <laughs> beehives. I mean, yeah. he he comes out of the wilderness, so the, and he's going to introduce. The God of creation, mm-hmm. and out walks Jesus. <laughs> nothing in appearance, but right. but no beauty, no majesty. Uh, that's why these Isaiah's. superhero mo- movies all take off because that's what we want. We want Captain America. And when they yeah. saw Just him, save they us, like, protect us, and don't hurt us, and we'll watch. Yeah, and God <laughs> he, came. He didn't in, stand he came out among men. He's a normal yeah. looking yeah. fellow. Came, normal came as a carpenter. People are like, I, it's just, I ain't follow no carpenter. They yeah, actually had a, I mean? they actually had an easier time believing John than they did because he was such a, so a wild man, looks like a prophet, crazy guy, yeah. than they did Jesus. Yeah, I mean, well, I got news for you, Captain America is not real. That guy's <laughs> an yeah. actor, and they put that stuff what? on. I like that commercial they do. With this guy's got all the muscles, and he walks in, and he starts peeling his muscles. Oh, off. that's the guy, the Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> How did they do that? It's one of the <laughs> he's got these little bitty horns. You know, he's like, I'm yeah. just being myself. Yeah, yeah. and you got. Then he couldn't get the jar of pickles up. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at that woman. He... <laughs> oh, okay. we, I can't top that. We're, we're done. That's over. It's over. <laughs> so we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.